You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it. You got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out. Basic to complex. This is Options Boot Camp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, your Options Boot Camp drill instructors, Mark Longo and Dan Passarelli, will break it all down for you. If you trade options, you've got to ask yourself, why would you choose an options trading platform that puts investors first? At public.com, there are no commissions or per contract fees. And more importantly, it's the only platform where you can earn a rebate on every single contract traded. That means you can save on your options trading costs and keep more of your capital in play. Whenever you trade options on public, your savings are automatically applied. So, don't change your strategy, change your platform, and see the difference in your bottom line. No commissions, no per-contract fees, and it's the only options trading platform where you can earn a rebate on every contract traded. To learn more, please visit public.com slash options bootcamp. Paid for by Public Investing. Options not suitable for all investors and carry significant risk. Full disclosures in podcast description. Fall in boot. It's time to get into peak options trading shape. It's time for Options Boot Camp. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Education Wednesday. Hope you're having a good trading week. We are closing in. In two weeks' time, listeners, we hopefully, ostensibly, will know who the next president is of these fine here United States are. I say hopefully because who knows what the hell will happen will happen the morning after all sorts of fun for all of our international listeners. I know you're probably paying attention to this one as well. So it's relevant to everyone across the board. Uh, let's just let's just hope things stay relatively safe and sane throughout the next couple of weeks. Of course, my name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the network upon which so many of you folks are binging. I just want to say, we've launched a lot of shows over the last 17 and now closing in on three quarters years. <laughs> They've all, we've been fortunate, all of them have met with strong response. This future show, though, something else. You folks are really responding to it in mass. So thank you to all of you who are checking out the now second half of Education Wednesday, which is the future's rundown. People are coming up to me at events. They're reaching out. It's just universal praise and excitement for this show, which is fun, which is fun because I, I will admit I was a little hesitant to launch it. I was like, I don't know. Is there a lot of demand for futures right now? Turns out the answer is yes. <laughs> a ton of demand. You folks are just the feedback has been fantastic. I really appreciate all of you out there who are tuning in and there are many. So another reason, if you're just listening to Boot Camp Man, you are missing out. Get the full network wherever you're getting this. That will get you the Futures Rundown. It'll be in your hot little hands or in your ear holes immediately after this show is done on your device of choice. So look forward to that. Of course, if you want to join us live, you want to get pro Q&As. Just had another awesome one yesterday with our buddies over there at Fidelity, the last emperor himself, joining us to tackle all your questions, as well as, of course, options oddities for a whole bunch of unusual activity. Crazy madness afoot on that show. Only place you can get that, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. That's, of course, the place to go to learn more. And guess what? Sometimes for you folks who send in banger questions, 
sometimes you open the door to the pro for you folks a little bit as well. A little fun reward for you folks. A little extra incentive to bring your A game on the question front. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> as we throw it out there to see who's joining us today. Let me page through my notes. Let me see. Is it this person? No. No, it's not that person. Oh, yeah, it's that guy. It's that, I think they call him Sergeant Passy, a.k.a. Mr. Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring. Mr. P, what a surprise to talk to you on Education Wednesday, sir. I was not expecting it. Uh, yes. Well, I'm predictable, if nothing else. How are things in the options mecca known as MTM, sir? Uh, doing pretty darn good, man. Can't complain. Can't Oh. Are people remembering to leave on the second T for Theta? <laughs> they are. We remind relentlessly, Mark. <laughs> You're welcome for that free bit of marketing advice. Uh, <laughs> as we keep on rolling into a little bit of the old basic training. All right, Boot, it's time to get in line. What you're going to do is learn. You're going to learn how options work. Do you hear me? Yes, you're going to learn options trading inside and out, basic to complex. There will be no failures. Do you hear me? Yes, Pull in. Prepare to learn. Yes, All right, everybody, let's get down to it. A little bit of the old basic training. And this topic this week is one we have touched on in the past. And again, I encourage you to go into the archives. Use that search function on whatever platform you're on. Or, of course, if you head to our website or if you're using our mobile app, you can type it in there. You'll get access to everything pretty easily there as well. But it's something that came across our radar recently. I, I can't remember if it was a listener question or I think it might have been Dan who could have also brought it up in his question of the week. Uh, however it was done, the topic of long strangles was approached again. And so... As we had a little quick discussion on it recently, it became apparent that it might be a good time to revisit this topic. So the long strangle is our topic, the revisiting, shall we say, of the long strangle is our topic for today. Dan, before I break down an example for the folks out there, uh, you're one of the reasons we're talking about this today. So let's start there. Let's play a little word association game as we like to do on this show. When I say to you, long strangle, what jumps to mind? What are your thoughts? What is your immediate response? Volatility, baby. Volatility. That's it, one word? Okay. I guess I'll, yeah, I'll do all the rest of the show there. You just relax in the, in the options <laughs> mecca that is Frankfurt. <laughs> this is why I have no voice, listeners, because of one word <laughs> responses like that from Mr. P. All right, so if you're sitting there and you're saying, you know what? What are these guys talking about? What are these crazy dudes talking about here on the show? What the hell is a long strangle? Allow me to set your mind at ease. Let's go out to everyone's favorite product known as XYZ. You know, you, you probably made fortunes in it. You've lost fortunes. And I'm, I'm actually doing all right right now. I'm doing pretty well in XYZ. So let's keep that trajectory going. Let's say XYZ. Let's keep the numbers nice and round, baby. Trading at 100 bucks. So it's fairly lofty. And you're coming in, you're looking at XYZ, you're thinking, maybe, maybe I don't want to buy the stock. It's 100 bucks. I think the stock is going to move, but I'm also not sure really where it's going to move. Something's coming up, let's say, maybe in the next month. Maybe it's an earnings announcement. Maybe it's something else, a drug approval, whatever the case may be. You think this, this name is poised for a move. You're just not really sure which way it's going to go, which is another reason why probably you maybe don't want to buy the stock. So you come in and you say, you know what? I think this bad boy is going to move, and it's going to move in the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to go out. I'm going to buy a one-month call on this one. I'm going to say 110. So 10% out of the money. In our example, it's going to cost a buck. Nice round numbers for everybody out there. So there you go. You bought the 110 call. You paid a dollar. But you're not done yet. You haven't done a strangle. You just bought a call. Now you decide, you know what? What if this earnings announcement, drug approval, whatever the case may be, what if it goes south? What if it's not as good as people are hoping? Well, then I probably should have a put in my back pocket as well. So you go out same distance one month, and you say, you know what? That 90 put is looking pretty juicy, also at about exactly a dollar. Notice in our example, there is no skew. Everything is trading for exactly the same amount of money. Nice and straightforward. Real world doesn't work like that. But for our examples, everything is nice and tidy, listeners. So what have you done now? You've purchased a one-month 10% out of the money call for $1, and also a one-month 10% out of the money put. Also for $1, guess what? You just bought a long strangle, listeners. You bought the one-month... Pretty much 10% out of the money strangle. Obviously, you add them both together. You paid $2 for that bad boy. 
not crazy expensive in this world we're living in right now, listeners. And so let's walk through a couple of examples, some outcomes you might face in this position. Uh, outcome one, it's pretty straightforward. You bought the 9110 Strangle for $2. So you know right away, if XYZ closes at expiration anywhere within that range, 90 to 110, guess what happens? You lose that two bucks, you're out. <laughs> so that should be painfully obvious now if it wasn't before. When you buy a Strangle like this, you really need this thing to move. You are buying two out of the money options at the end of the day. You're not even buying at the money options like a straddle. You're buying out of the money options. So you really need this thing to kick it into high gear and do it quickly. So right there, you can see very simply, closes between 90 and 110 at expiration. You're out your two bucks. Now, there is a scenario where that doesn't come to pass and it closes within there. We'll get to that in a second. Outcome two, let's say the stock runs, closes at 108 at expiration. Guess what? You make six bucks. How does that work? Well, the call that you bought, 100 strike call, guess what? Goes out worth $8. But you paid $2 for the strangle. Remember, you bought the call and the put. So that money isn't free. That has to go against the profits you made. So $8 for the call minus two bucks you paid. Guess what? You still made six bucks. That's a pretty good do, as the kids say. And you didn't need to pick a direction. You were right. Uh, now, outcome three, this earnings, this drug approval, whatever it is, they kind of screw the pooch on this. Stock drops from 100 all the way down to 88 bucks at expiration. Guess what happens there? You break even. Why is that? Well, your put now is, of course, $2 in the money, so it's worth $2 at expiration. Your call is worthless, but guess what you paid for that strangle? You paid two bucks. So you paid two bucks. It went out net worth $2, so you broke even in that scenario. So not a winner, but not a loser. You live the fight another day. Now, I remember I said earlier there is a scenario where you could hang out in the middle and still do all right. And that is what I referred to earlier, what Dan and I used to do on the trading floor, which is gamma scalping. We've said a million times, this is not really viable for retail, but I could hear someone out there listening to this show saying, what if you gamma scalped? Then if you stayed in between the strikes, you could still make money. So the answer is yes. So let's walk through a scenario for that as well. Let's say the stock is kind of range bound and it ranges between 104 on the upside and 96 on the downside before settling right back out, literally unchanged on expiration at $100. You might say, well, you're out, right? You're out. You didn't get the move you need. But if you gamma scalp, you're going to be long a ton of gamma with this position now. So the stock rallies to 104. Let's say you're also a technical genius. You know exact tops to sell and bottoms to buy. Let's just use that as, let's just add that to the mix as well. In that case, you sell the stock at its apex of 104. You buy the stock back at 96. Guess what? You just scalped $8 on the stock. So even though the stock went out worthless, your options went out worthless, you scalped a lot of money on the stock. You probably made money on this trade. Now, obviously we said before, that's not very viable for retail because you don't have the margin treatment we used to have as market makers. You don't have the capital we used to have as market makers. Uh, so we used to do this all day long. That was when a slow day, that's what we were doing, looking for tops, looking for bottoms to scalp stock pretty much all day, every day. Uh, you can also do the poor man's version with the options. If the stock shoots up fairly quickly to 104, you could let those par calls go and then sit on the puts. And then of course, if the stock retraces, you could sell those puts out and hope you get some value. It depends, obviously, when it hits that 96, how far in the cycle, how much the put will have eroded. But that's kind of a poor man's version of it as well. You're kind of legging out of the strangle individual. That's probably, if you're going to do that, that's probably the most, the closest to gamma scalping that retail can get out there. So there are ways, I don't want people writing in, there are ways that the stock dillies in the middle <laughs> that uh, you could still make money, but they're not that viable for retails. And we, we don't really talk about them that much here. All right, Dan, I just said a lot of words. You said one word. You said volatility. Let's see if you have more than one word now for our audience. When I say strangles to you, sir, what are your <laughs> thoughts? What are your use cases? What are your scenarios? Because you were all jazzed on long strangles, and we're all curious why. Sir. All right. I guess I can squeeze in a couple of more words, Mark. Um, so, yeah. So strangles and straddles, for that matter. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, let me start out by contrasting a little bit on why somebody would trade a straddle versus a strangle. I get asked this pretty regularly, and, and there is a reason for that. There's an answer to that question. So if, if I want to put on a pure volatility position 
where I make money, whether the stock goes up or down, I just think it's going to move a lot. The go-to that hits my mind is, okay, yeah, straddle. But when I'm actually executing it and I look at where the stock is relative to the available strike prices, like sometimes if the stock is like, maybe the strike prices are $5 wide. You know, you got like the 100 strike, the 105 strike, 110 strike. And the stock is at like 102 and a half. It's smack dab between two strikes. Well, if I choose the 105 strike, I actually have a positive delta position. If I choose the 100 strike, I might end up with a negative delta position. So how do I fix that? Ah. There's where we select the strangle <clears throat> because what I do is I, I buy that just out of the money call and just out of the money put in theory, in oversimplified theory, that call and put should have the same Delta. And so they offset each other and I'm back to a pretty pure Delta neutral pro volatility position. Now, I think we might have mentioned this on the show last week or the week before. Maybe there was some other webinar I did. I don't know. I've been doing a lot of webinars lately, guys. Um, some uh, what what tends to happen, especially when interest rates are not zero, which they've been for a couple of years now. Calls end up like if a stock is exactly at the money. Calls end up having a bigger delta than puts. Um, you know, like say it's a hundred strike that we're talking about, stocks right at a hundred. The hundred strike calls, they're gonna have a bigger delta than 50, and the hundred strike puts are gonna have a smaller delta than 50. And that has a lot to do with the fact that there's an interest rate uh, um, and the time value of money. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the show that we talked about that uh, last week. <clears throat> so, you know, even if a stock is right at the money, you might end up doing a strangle just to get a little bit more delta neutral. Um, the further out in time we go, uh, the more you have that delta disparity. I don't know. I mean, I kind of focused on one, one aspect of it. Uh, Mark gave a really great overview of kind of how it works and why you would do it and that kind of thing. So that was the thing I kind of chose to drill down on is just why you would choose straddles, strangles versus straddles. And, you know, it's because of this whole little Delta nuance. Ah, yes. The Delta nuance. If you want more nuances, including maybe uh, strangles on the short side, uh, we have talked about them very recently, including our episode 300, The Dangerous World of Covered Strangles. So if you want some short strangle talk in that scenario against stock, then we got you covered there. That was just from August 7th, just a few months ago. Uh, we also talked about it February 15th of last year, episode 224. Let's get crazy with covered strangles and straddles. So more covered strangles there. And episode 153, back from the heady days of September of 2021, we talked straddles versus strangles calendar spreads and secret Metallica. I think that was the week that Metallica came and played a secret show here in, in Chicago. <laughs> so yes, we have talked about strangles a lot on the show uh, very recently. Let's hear from the folks now, shall we? A little bit of the old mail call. Mail call. Time to look at questions submitted by our listeners. All right, everybody, let's have some fun, shall we, listeners? Let's look at some of our questions of the week. We can pay off a couple. We had some fun flash polls already this week coming hot and heavy off some of our shows earlier this week, including, I think this was from our Monday Option Block show. We were talking about BSX, everyone's favorite stock, BSX. Boston Scientific, not known to be the sexiest of names, has had a pretty good year so far this year, though. We noticed someone coming in on Monday, buying 10,000 of the October 
expiring this week on the 25th, 91 calls for 95 cents. These were out of the money. I have to go look and see exactly where BSX was on Monday, but these were a fair amount out of the money. And they're looking even more so today. The stock $87, excuse me, $86.26 got to 83 yesterday. Back on Monday, it was actually 88. So uh, they, yeah, they were about $3 out of the money at the time. They paid a dollar for them for the privilege of having this upside for this week. Worth noting, earnings are on Wednesdays. This was clearly an earnings-motivated play. We just asked our audience, at that price, are you a buyer or a seller? And it was a pretty even fight. At the end, the sellers took it 53.8%, 46.2% for buying. Dan, looks like right now the smart money is on selling, but they do have earnings, I do believe, after the bell today. So, oh, wait, maybe, maybe they had them before. Yeah, they had them before the bell. So I'm guessing the answer was to sell. Dan, what do you think? <laughs> I would say I would have said sell for sure. It's amazing. Definitely. It's amazing how you knew that so well, sir. <laughs> Your insight. Your insight is beyond beyond peer, sir. All right, let's keep rolling out to our actual question of the week, which is live right now, listeners. You know, you, you folks may have heard. I don't know. May, maybe you heard there's an election coming up. So we said, you know, if you had to buy one straddle, this is kind of going back to our long premium trend and theme of the show today. We're going straddles this time. If you had to buy one straddle to hold through the election, which one are you going to choose? We gave you three choices and the infamous other. We gave you DJT, so obviously the Donald Trump media name. Uh, we gave you the November. These were all at the money at the time. Uh, November expiring on the 8th, so in the weeklies, 31 straddle for a whopping $17.80. So you were paying well north of 50% of the value of that stock for a straddle through expiration. Again, kind of just goes to reflect the fact that that stock doesn't move on anything fundamental. It's all driven by politics. Uh, Spy, same deal, expiring on November 8th. The 582, at, which at the time was at the money, obviously out of the money now, uh, that, was, that was a $17 straddle. Or the VIX 19 straddle expiring a week later, the 13th, because obviously VIX goes out on a Wednesday. If you want to have some election action you want to probably have your contract go through and not just settle on wednesday morning so we had expiring on the 13th that one's four dollars and 16 cents so dan any of those straddles really float your boat the djt the spy or the vix or are you going to choose uh, the infamous other sir oh god man you know uh i mean with the vix up above 20 uh today for those of you who are listening to this live but still like you know 19 or whatever yesterday uh, it's it's too expensive, I think, to buy SPY uh, straddles. Um, I don't know. Gun to my head, I'd probably rather be a seller of that. The VIX is kind of a funny little tricky one. I mean, I guess I, I haven't really looked at... Uh, here, hold on a second. So let's see. Um, VIX... I don't really trade the VIX options proper or anything here. So let's just take a little look-see. Um, I mean, we'd have to go to which expiration is it for? It's the November 13th. Uh, the, week, the week after, in the 13th, yeah. Yeah. So what are those, the 16-day ones? Uh, they were something like that, yeah. We put it up yeah, on Monday, so, obviously, yeah. Uh, hey, you know, I mean, actually... <clears throat> Actually, a VIX, gun to my head on which one of these I'm going to pick. It might be the VIX because if if the 16th is the date. Um, uh, 13th, 13th. Or, oh, 13th, wait. I mean, uh, it's, 16 it's, days to expiration. VIX obviously goes out on Wednesday, so it'd be the 13th of November. So a week after the, the Wednesday, not immediately after the election, but one week after. Yeah, I mean, it looks like you can buy that for like $3.50. Yeah, it's even and, cheaper now. It was over 4 bucks on Monday. Yeah. Oh, really? Um, I mean, an explosion to the upside, which is not crazy, but, you know, not likely, but possible, would put us, I mean, that'd be massively profitable. And I'm going to tell you, um, I think that, 
I think the VIX is this level because of the election. And so I think it would surely pull back three to four points, um, which probably doesn't result in being massively profitable, but at least it's protection to the downside um, so that you wouldn't lose what you would if you just bought a call. Um, and I'm not going to pretend to understand DJT. Uh, I don't follow it just because. I don't think anyone can understand that stock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I just pick that one. I just don't pick that one because if you're going to trade anything, you better freaking understand it. I don't understand that. All right. Well, yeah, our audience is coming in right now. 40, almost 41% going for SPY. And then oh. uh, 36.4%. I'm surprised how many are going for that DJT. That DJT straddle is is crazy expensive. I mean, it's over 50% of the value of the stock. That shows how much of the value of this name is tied up in this election, right? And then 13.6% for the VIX. And for that was 416 at the time, 9.1% for other. I guess you can maybe make an argument for that DJT because... You could say if he wins, it's going to 100. If he loses, it's going to zero. So I guess in that case, 50% of the value is, is a discount. But I don't know. It just seems <laughs> it seems like madness to me. You know what else is madness, listeners? It's Dan's question of the week. So let's get to it. And now it's the moment you've been waiting for. It's time for the Market Taker Question of the Week. All right, Senior AP, the floor is yours, sir. What you got for the folks this week? All right. So um, how can you hedge when implied volatility is so high? So, you know, the nature of this question is, hey, you know, I own some stock or spiders or something. Puts are so gosh darn expensive. How the heck am I supposed to buy puts to hedge? So if you're asking yourself that question, it's a pretty darn good question uh, because it, it's tough. So kind of left with two choices and both have their challenges. One is the first one I'll talk about is one that I don't really like to use that much. And that is buying a put spread. Now, the nice thing about buying a put spread is that you can hedge off a lot of the, uh, you know, volatility, extrinsic value by, you know, when you're buying an overpriced put, selling yet a different overpriced put. But, you know, the problem there is you're only buying puts to hedge if you're just looking for a big, pretty darn big move. And if you get a pretty darn big move, well, you better pick the right short strike for that put spread. Otherwise you're only going to be partially hedged. So that's why I'm not a mega fan of that. Uh, the other one that has its challenges that I'm still a bigger fan of is a split time collar, which is where you go ahead and you buy that massively expensive put but then you sell an overpriced call typically with a little bit less time to expiration so that it has a higher theta. But you know, the tricky thing there is if you're selling closer to expiration, even though it might be more expensive from a volatility standpoint, it's still a cheaper option because it has less time. And so you have to go closer to the strike. And you know, if it turns out you don't need the hedge because Let's face it, if you knew that a stock you owned was going down, you wouldn't hedge it, you would just sell it. So you think it's going up, but you got that darn short call. And if right, and the stock does go up or the ETF does go up, uh, then it, it gets a little messy. You gotta do some adjusting and managing and be pretty nimble. And there's definitely some nuance to that. But those are the only two ways you can do it. So there. So there indeed. And let's see, listen, let's get out of here from this week on a question from a new handle. This is collections with a Z. So I'm not sure what he's collecting. Maybe he's collecting options. I guess we'll find out. He or she, I should say, he or she. Uh, do you think it's okay for traders to begin their trading journey 
in options or should they cut their teeth in, in stonks? <laughs> yes, in stonks. Should they cut their teeth in stonks first before graduating to options? Ah, Dan, the age old question. Uh, has this ever happened at MTM? Has someone come to you at MTM who's a complete neophyte, knows nothing about markets, and somehow they found their way to you? That would be impressive. And they said, hey, should I learn stocks first before I come to you? Has that ever happened, Dan? And if so, what would you tell them? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure it's happened. I can't think of a, a specific example, but I'm sure it's happened. Um, I don't, You know, I, t I tell them that it's okay to go straight into options because, you know, you're always doing something, you're doing something different as an option trader than you're doing as a stunk trader. Um, and especially, actually, if somebody starts out as an investor and then gets into option trading, that's almost a problem. Like there's a lot of stuff that has to get fixed there. Uh, cause your brain is required, is required to work a certain way for the long-term buy and hold stock investing. And, you know, I, I've had, I had somebody ask me one time, this is in, in an in-person presentation. I was talking about buying puts and the guy raised his hand and he's like, well, why would anyone ever buy a put? <laughs> it's like, what, <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, but you know, you just have that bullish bias when you're really entrenched brainwave wise in long-term buy and hold stock investing. So yeah, I, I, I think it's great to start out your trading journey in options for sure. Now, Dan and I are obviously uh, preaching to the choir a little bit. We're coming from the options world. So we see things through an option centric lens, but yeah, I don't, I don't see the harm. I think if you're going to, need to come learn options, Dan, you're going to have to come to, into grips with Delta pretty quickly, I would think. And that's going to teach you about stocks, whether you want it or not. So it's kind of hard to start and learn about options and become an adept options trader and not have some facility with the underlying. So I think you will get there if you come in on options. And I think, you know, Dan and I, again, preaching to the choir a bit. But uh, that said, there's room for all of it out there. And collections keep the fun coming out there. Great question. Collect. Let us know which, how you proceed. Let us know what happens. Collection out there. We're looking forward uh, to hear from all you folks. That's going to do it for us on the old OBC today. But guess what? We're not done yet. Back in a little bit with the newest addition to the game, the Futures Rundown. Have you ever said to yourself, what, what the hell is our Bob anyway? Or why are there so many soybeans in, in a contract? All this crazy stuff. Am I going to get a, a truckload of soybeans dumped on my front lawn if I trade these things? We're actually going to get into that today. So if you're intrigued by that or maybe terrified by that, you should be tuning in to the Futures Rundown. It's coming up right after this show. If you're listening live, if you're listening on demand like I know most of you are, just hit next on your device of choice. Yet another reason you should be listening to the full network. And of course, if you want to go full, full, you want to go above and beyond, you want to get the pro Q&As, you want to get the options out of these two additional shows coming at you, giveaways, live streams, all kinds of fun. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. And you know, of course, where to go to learn more about all of our friends over there at public. It's just public.com slash options bootcamp. Great way to support the show is head on over there. Just go to that URL. It's pretty much all you have to do. And then you can check out what they have and proceed from there. Tell them what you like. Maybe tell them what you like to see them add to their platform. Guess what? Because you're coming from OBC, they probably will make it happen. They like us over there. So head on over public.com slash options bootcamp to kick the tires and light the fires. Hey, that rebate, not the worst thing in the world. Check it out over there. And Dan, where should they go if they want to check out all things MTM, sir? Yeah, sure. We love Options Bootcamp listeners. Um, you're our favorite. Go to markettaker.com. Market, as in stock market, taker, as in take what is rightfully yours, two T's in a row, markettaker.com. Don't forget the second T for Theta listeners, markettaker.com, the place to go to learn more. That's going to do it for us for right now. Back again in a little bit of the Futures Rundown, then back again with our usual array of content Thursday through Tuesday until we're back again next Education Wednesday, another episode of Options Bootcamp. Stay safe out there, everybody.
If you trade options, you've got to ask yourself, why would you choose an options trading platform that puts investors first? At public.com, there are no commissions or per contract fees. And more importantly, it's the only platform where you can earn a rebate on every single contract traded. That means you can save on your options trading costs and keep more of your capital in play. Whenever you trade options on public, your savings are automatically applied. So don't change your strategy, change your platform and see the difference in your bottom line. No commissions, no per contract fees. And it's the only options trading platform where you can earn a rebate on every contract traded. To learn more, please visit public.com slash options bootcamp. Paid for by Public Investing. Options not suitable for all investors and carry significant risk. Full disclosures in podcast description. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.